So what's today all about? Today it's just all about a, a wee gathering of like-minded people who are into cars, bikes and anything mechanical really. I see there's different kinds of cars here. It's not just the old classics as we used to no, as we used no, to know them. No, we I mean we want to sort of bring it all together, the classic cars which we all love to see and enjoy messing with and the more modern stuff from, you know, we fiestas there that go and we've got the old jags and everything else, everything's welcome here. So if you're interested in cars, there's something for you here? Absolutely, that's what we hope for. Cars, vans, bikes, doesn't matter. We all have an interest in something along those lines, so why not bring it all together in one place? Things have been difficult in the last few years with COVID and everything. Is, is this your first time getting together? No, it's not our first time getting together. Um, we had a transport show earlier on in the year, which covered lorries, buses, tractors, cars, bikes, a bit of everything. This is, today is more of just an end of season sort of thing. Most of these cars, certainly the classics, will be getting pampered and packed away over the winter, I'm sure. Um, the weather is on the turn now, so it's probably the last chance a lot of them will be out this year. Um, but things certainly have been difficult over the last couple of years, yes. Um, it's only off late that we're really beginning to do things again and uh, try and generate some income for the club and those round about as well. There might be somebody watching who says, Actually, I think I'm really quite interested in this. What would you say to them? Come along. We do stuff every second Saturday. Um, there'll be we mini auto tests, uh, time trials around the track. Just basically, if you're interested in messing around with cars, come out and mess around with cars out here. It's, it's a good place to be. I was an apprentice mechanic in Charlie's garage uh, and I started there when I was 15 years of age. I left school on a Friday and I started in Charlie's Guys and Apprentice on the Monday morning. And I haven't stopped since. You're a founder member of this club, but I believe your history with cars goes back further. We really started the club in, in the very late 60s, maybe early 70s. That was the beginning of the club. It was just a crowd of guys that were keen on cars and we want to do events on our own because we used to kind of speed around the town and that but, but the police were never really impressed so we decided that we'd find a, a venue where we could uh, use the cart legally so, so the club started off from there really So, so it, where was that? Where were you then? Our first event really was out in Benadrove it, it was a hill climb we did it in Benadrove that was our first ever event and how did that go? I'll tell you how it went. It, it didn't really go that well for me. Uh, I, I remember I was just newly married. My wife was expecting. And uh, I was using just a, a my road car, like everybody was doing. And I went out there in the morning to practice. And uh, I, when I was doing the hill climb, I was, there was no helmets in, no airbags, no safety stuff. And uh, I was in over the brow of this hill and I thought it was straight on but it wasn't, it was hard right and when I went over the brow of the hill there was a big rock face in front of me and I went splattered right into it and I went through the screen flying through the screen uh, but I remember I was taken to hospital lying in the theatre and the surgeon lifting the skin on my forehead up and him with his finger, wee finger pulling all the, the a windskin glass off the hill man out of my head. I remember that really. But the funny thing about all that was that uh, that was fine. I got over that. I was in bed for about a week or a fortnight uh, and I recovered that. But about 30 years after that event, I always used to get a lump on my, on my forehead 
like a boil or something like that. And uh, I remember this, I mean, that's only about 10 years ago, actually, this came out. And I remember, you know, there's something funny in my forehead there, so I squeezed it out. I thought it was a yellow boil or something like that. A, a piece of my Hillman up windscreen came out. That means there was a piece of my Hillman up windscreen lying in my head for about 35 years, if not 40 years. So I really got good memories of, uh, of the car club. So cars are in your blood, literally. In my blood, really. I mean, it's a bit like a disease. You know, I, I don't wish I was cured for really, you know. It's an addiction. You know, some people have an addiction for drink or fags, but you know, cars, and the thing is, it's expensive. <laughs> and I still have that disease. I, I still haven't found a cure for it. And I don't, I, I can imagine the wife would wish there was a tablet for it. But uh, I, I don't think there is really. But it's a great thing to have. Great, absolutely. It was part of my life's enjoyment. And I still get fired up. I'm now getting on in years. And I still jump into my car. It was a nice car. I just, I just feel 10, 20 years younger. I just love it. And I'm still like that. Still like that. There seems to be a lot of friendship and comradeship. Yeah, there? yeah, that is actually. Yeah, it is, it is. Uh, when everybody's got the same kind of issue on, on thinking and, and ways of doing things or, or a way of enjoying life, you know, you get together and you have a good, you know, it's, it's just wonderful. And the club's been going on now for, what? But, okay, every club's got its up, ups and downs, but it's been steady really for about 50 years, 60 years, the whole thing. It's just wonderful. And the other thing is to, I see a lot of the young ones come in. A lot of the young ones come in and, uh, you know, it's great to see that I've been carried on. And the other thing is I always like to encourage the young ones to get involved in that, get involved in doing things with your hands and plug up instead of sitting in the house playing about with your wee phone. Absolutely just enjoy, get out of the house, get an old car, have a bit of fun with it. And you learn so much about life in general. Never mind about the car, but life in general. I was born Bragger, 30 North Bragger, 12 North Bragg, it was Dennis, who now owns Dennis Autos. Used to go over and work with Dennis. Every now and again, he would tell me, go down to the shop and get me 20 cigarettes, get me some money, I'd come back with the cigarettes and get a wee bit of change for sweets. That's where the interest in cars came from. So, always been interested in cars and uh, Regularly bought a car, from the age of passing the test, regularly bought a car every year, year and a half. If I had all these cars nowadays, I'd be a millionaire, but uh, I don't, and I'm not. So... <laughs> I think if I remember you, you drive other vehicles too in your work. Yes, I've got uh, lots of different things to work with. Uh, do you mean building-wise? Hmm. Yeah, build, uh, pickups. Vans, telehandlers, really into all of these things, diggers and tractors. And, but uh, my main passion is classic cars. And about seven years ago, I started uh, looking for a classic car. And I was looking for a Rover P5B Coupe, but I ended up with a Triumph Stag. And what I've always done is looked for something that's really well priced, that can maybe do a wee bit of work to, and then it'll be a car that's presentable. And so I've now reached the stage where I've got about six or seven classic cars. We've seen a few of them today. Yes, we've, we've got three today. We've got uh, Triumph Stag, which is the first car I ever bought. Got a, BMW Z3, which was converted to look like a Cobra. And my most recent acquisition is an Evo 6 uh, Lancer. So it's a car that was used for track days and shows. So it looks all right, it looks all right. Which is your favorite? My favourite, uh, probably the Rover P5B, which was the fourth car that I ever bought. Now. So that came from Wales. And uh, they sold it on the eBay. 
really cheap. And the problem with the car was that it would run four minutes and die. It'd run for four minutes and die. Turned out it was the automatic choke. And when I changed the automatic choke to a manual choke, the car was fine. So the car now, you can see some of them selling for really crazy money. And uh, I only paid £3,000 for it. So, <laughs> but to me, it's an investment because if I put money into the bank, I don't get anything back on it. Put money into some of these cars, you know, they will appreciate it. I mean, you can see from today's turnout that uh, there's an overload of cars that people have and they're quite happy to bring to an event like this and show them at an event. But there's also an awful lot of cars and barns and garages that nobody knows about and if they only made themselves uh, known to other people, other people would take these cars on and you know bring them back to life and they would uh, keep the British car industry that now doesn't really exist and it would just keep it alive. <laughs> but if, if anybody had cars and if they were wanting to see them sort of brought back to life, then there's plenty of people that are here today that would be quite happy to take them on as projects, either for the people or buy them and then renovate them and bring them back to life.